I speak these words in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. How are you guys doing? I'd like to do a little demonstration of the past few weeks in my life. Uh, if you don't know, I'm the chaplain at the Episcopal School. So here it goes. Leading uh, three chapels per day. Planning the renovation of our chapel. Getting ready to take 45 seventh graders to Atlanta for three days. Finding substitute teachers. Fundraising. Coordinating students' community service hours. Teaching classes. Coaching two soccer teams. Reading bedtime stories. And though my wife will never admit it, doing the dishes. <laughs> Just enough time for prayer. Wait! No! Where are you? No, where are you going? That was dead at 8 o'clock. Thank you so much. <laughs> Does anyone else ever feel just like that balloon? You're exerting all of your energy you're deflating rapidly and you're spiraling out of control with no sense of direction and you're anticipating nothing besides the immin your imminent collapse as a shadow of yourself. <laughs> now I know I just changed gears on you a little bit and that's kind of a depressing lesson to come out of a balloon. But that's kind of where I'm at. And life feels like this sometimes. And it's my stage in life that has me so busy running around doing all these things, and sometimes I'm so busy losing steam, I fear I've lost my direction. Maybe you're in a different stage of life. Maybe you're feeling deflated because you're sick, or you're lonely, or you're just bored. Either way, the fear of the unknown future is real for all of us, and when we feel this way, faith is all about clinging to the voice of God, guiding us back to hope. So whether you're young or old, busy or bored, and thanks be to God that God's house is big enough for all of us, right? All of us who feel deflated from time to time entertain ideas of what we'd rather be doing besides spiraling out of control. Personally, I wish I had more time. More time for rest or recreation or fellowship or friendship. More time for creativity and for prayer and for reflection. At times, I lead a life of ceaseless activity and reactivity. And with all that reacting, I become the servant of the next thing. You know what I mean? I'm the servant of the next thing on the calendar, the next email, the next errand. And I lose my spontaneity. I lose my autonomy. Does that sound familiar? Now, more than ever, we need the Good Shepherd to lead us beside still waters to restore our souls. We need the guidance and direction of the Shepherd who walks with us and speaks love and truth. That still, small voice of God speaking from within us 
that reminds us that we are indeed good enough exactly the way that we are and that all manner of things shall be well. The voice that reminds us what's most important in life, how our time is best spent, and how it is that we can have life to the fullest. If you haven't caught on to it yet, it is Good Shepherd Sunday. And all this talk we hear today about the Good Shepherd is really not just some antiquated or sentimental Sunday school lesson. It is real. And it is about us, you and me, and about our deep human need to listen for the voice of God in the midst of our lives and to make the courageous choice to follow it and not to follow the wrong voices. In our noisy world, God's still small voice seems to get drowned out. All their other influences out there seeking to swerve us and to steer us in every direction, influences that turn us into circling and deflating balloons. I have another one. I have had tons of positive influences in my life. And I was thinking about this the other day. Who are the voices that have shaped me into who I am? What direction have I taken from them? As a child, it was my parents, teachers, and coaches. My Sunday school teachers, my youth leaders. As I got older, it was pastors and priests, friends, professors, co-workers, bosses. But these positive voices were never speaking in a quiet room to a completely focused audience. There were always other voices yelling in the room, and they did find an audience with me. They still do. I'm talking about the voices of consumerism. The messages of the ego. Those voices that are so difficult to ignore. Be successful. Be attractive. Be popular. Yeah, I want that. I enjoy that. And it goes on. You want comfort and luxury and beauty and convenience and security and leisure. Yeah, I want all of that too. You want nice things and you want all the right friends. And you want your kids to be well-educated and talented and well-adjusted and happy and financially stable. And There's a little pressure going on. And not to mention the voices that are coming from me. My self-doubt. My insecurity and guilt. The list goes on. And I don't think I'm alone. There are endless voices. And if we follow them all, we will end up deflated and directionless. So it's up to us. We have to choose which voices are worthwhile, trustworthy, which directions are possible, which voices are too costly or risky, which ones are fool's gold. Which voices lead us to the fullness of life and which ones just suck the life right out of us? No servant can serve two masters and no sheep can follow two shepherds. I can't tell you which voices are most important for you. You have to answer that for yourself. But I can say that the good shepherd is trustworthy and he cares about you. And that's the good news this morning. The voice of God is inside each of you. And I believe it in my core 
that God is speaking truth and love at all times, even right now. The shepherd does not get angry and stop speaking if we refuse to listen and pay attention. He just keeps on quietly walking with us through our lives, speaking love and truth faithfully and steadfastly, offering us a fuller version of ourselves and a deeper appreciation for life, a deeper love for the world. And the more we listen, the more we trust the shepherd and we take his direction, I believe the simpler life becomes. And with simplicity comes wholeness and happiness. And with wholeness and happiness comes singularity of purpose and new energy to serve the well-being of others. And this is the paradox and the promise of the gospel. When we deflate ourselves serving others and living into our purpose, we find ourselves somehow reinflated. There is always new life, resurrection. There is a mysterious buoyancy when Christ is Lord in our lives. And one day, our cups will runneth over, and we will remain filled forever. John Ross said it was okay to have a little fun with that. <laughs> For the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. And surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen.